Hello students, this is Perio, Chapter 24, Lecture 2, Dentinal Hypersensitivity. Dentinal hypersensitivity is a short, sharp, painful reaction that occurs when an area of exposed dentin is subjected to mechanical, thermal, or chemical stimuli. Examples of stimuli are mechanical toothbrushing or a fingernail, thermostimuli could be ice cream or iced tea, could also be hot coffee, uh, chemical stimuli could be a grapefruit, the acidity. Dentinal hypersensitivity is associated with exposed dentin due to recession of gingival margin that normally covers the dentin. It may be localized or generalized. Not all recession is hypersensitive. Precipitating factors for sensitivity. Gingival recession could be due to the destruction of the enamel, successful surgical and non-surgical periodontal therapy, occasionally causes slight dentin exposure after healing. Patients can perceive sensitivity as a side effect from therapy. Actual sensitivity due to attachment loss prior to therapy. The hydrodynamic theory of hypersensitivity. The dentinal tubules penetrate the dentin. The tubules are long, miniature tunnels extending through the dentin. The tubules are partially filled with a cytoplasm from pulp cells. Changes in temperature create hydrodynamic forces in fluid-filled tubules that stimulate nerve endings. Figure 24.4 on page 404 in your book shows the diagram that illustrates the numerous dentinal tubules that penetrate the dentin. On the right, a scanning electron micrograph of the cross-section of dentinal tubules adjacent to the pulp chamber of a human tooth are seen. Figure 24.5 on the same page so shows the odontoblastic cell processes that extend from the pulp through the dentin. If the cementum is missing, then these processes are exposed. Origins of hypersensitivity. Instrumenting areas with existing hypersensitivity may result in sharp pain. Local anesthesia may be necessary for patient comfort. Most instrumentation of root surfaces does not cause dental hypersensitivity. The smear layer is a crystalline debris from the tooth surface that covers dentinal tubules and inhibits fluid flow, thus preventing sensitivity. Here is an image showing dentinal tubules before therapy. You can see more information on page 406, figure 24.6 in your book. The dentinal tubules prior to therapy may be open, sclerosed, or insulated from the pulp itself by the formation of secondary dentin. This is figure 24.7 on page 406. These are various possibilities for dentinal tubules following therapy. Chemicals can be used to occlude the dentinal tubules and to eliminate or minimize the associated dentinal sensitivity. Most areas of hypersensitivity eventually desensitize on their own. Dentinal tubules go through a natural process of crystallization and occlusion. The natural process takes several weeks. The strategies for management are chemical management and patient education. Chemicals can be used to seal tubules, fluoride, calcium hydroxide, cavity varnish, 
or toothpaste for sensitive teeth such as those containing potassium nitrate or strontium chloride. Patient education about hypersensitivity. Management of patients undergoing non-surgical periodontal therapy includes warning patients about the possibility of hypersensitivity before beginning any treatment. Recap. Hypersensitivity is a short, sharp, painful reaction that occurs when an area of exposed dentin is subjected to mechanical, thermal, or chemical stimuli. Hypersensitivity can be caused by mechanical, thermal, and chemical stimuli. The hydrodynamic theory is the current theory for the origins of hypersensitivity. Sensitivity can increase following periodontal instrumentation. If sensitivity occurs, it will gradually disappear over a few weeks' time. Meticulous plaque control is one of the most important factors in prevention and control of sensitivity. Special toothpaste may be helpful, but do not expect immediate results. And prior to non-surgical therapy, warn patients that they may experience hypersensitivity. This concludes Perio Chapter 24, Lecture 2.